I'm about to show y'all just how powerful a random squad can be with just a little coordination and a loadout we've thought all the way through. Welcome back to the SES Emperor of Democracy. Today is all about teamwork. That just means we're going to be sticking with our team and using our loadout to deal with any ornery fossil fuels that think they can stand up to manage democracy. We're going to go over the basics of cover and fire, positioning, and how to use our loadout to support our team regardless of what we bring to the battlefield. Now that you know what the video is about, let's drop in and stomp some bugs. While we get situated, let's talk about what we brought with us today. We're working with a bit of a combination here of incendiary grenades, the orbital gas strike, and the Pummeler SMG to make sure those dumb animals stay in their pens. Pummeler's a fantastic weapon with or without a squad, but it really shines in team play. The reason I think is obvious. It can stagger darn near anything the bugs can bring, including chargers and stalkers. We're going to use this weapon to kind of corral the bugs into tight spaces where we can hit them with our toxic gas and set them on fire. This should clear out all the chaff enemies and enable our team to deal with the heavier threats. The rest of what you bring ain't super important, but if you want to try this for yourself, I'll tell you the rest of what we're working with. The AC-8 autocannon is going to pulverize those hive guard, bile spewers, if we get any, and brood commanders. It can clear bug nests and it's also pretty good against chargers, with just 4-5 to five shots to the posterior taking them out for good. We can use it to kill bile titans, but I wouldn't recommend it. Instead, we're going to finish any weak ones off with a quick volley up their bug hole. To deal with those stilted freaks, we took both the orbital rail cannon strike and the 500 kilogram bombs from Eagle One. Rail cannon's not going to kill them in one hit, but it will put them low enough to where we can easily finish them off with our auto cannon. Or we can just let our team handle them once they're weak. Now that you know the loadout, let's talk about how we're going to use it to help our squad. The general theme here is that we're going to be really good at killing anything that's smaller than a charger. We have the perfect setup for it with those ensign grenades and the orbital gas strikes. We've got the auto cannon to deal with kind of biospheres of medium tier threats. And then we've got the pummeler to do what it does best, just stagger things in front of us and make hunters a just complete non-issue. For those of you that don't know, a single bullet from the pummeler will stagger a hunter out of their leap. This makes it real easy to deal with them. And as you can see here, make stalkers a little bit of a joke if you can frickin' aim at their head. But... At the same time, even if you're not killing them super fast, it doesn't really matter when they can't move. And especially because you can spray it between multiple stalkers, which you might see here in a bit. But uh, just the raw ability to crowd control the enemy in front of you while dealing with damage over time grenades and stratagems, it's just super powerful, y'all. This ability to clear out chaff enemies with just such ease is really going to help our team with focusing down those big threats. If you've ever felt kind of overwhelmed by chargers or bio titans, usually the reason is that your team isn't able to kill everything fast enough to be able to focus on. By the way, here's me staggering those stalkers like I was talking about. But if all the chaff enemies are dead, and my team, like 90% of the teams I've played with, is chock full of anti-tank, they're going to have a super easy time of just whacking every charger or bio titan that pops up. Turns out when you don't have a thousand hunters trying to nibble your toes off, it's actually pretty easy to aim at their face or their weak point with those anti-tank weapons. So that's how we're mostly going to be supporting our team today. Alright, y'all have endured my ramblings about loadouts for long enough, so let's talk about what the subject of the video is. How to play with your squad. So here you'll see I'm running around with my team. I'm not splitting off. I could. Y'all have seen me solo hell dives before. I know how to handle objectives. But if I'm sticking around my teammates, I can really help them out and kind of just make sure everything is dead. And if they start to fight a little bit too much, I'll ping like follow me and I'll just start running away. And you know, if they are being stubborn and don't want to move, then I'll just kind of reinforce them once they're dead near me in the objective. But I will stick around for fights a lot longer than I do when I play solo. And the main reason is because I'm trying to enable my teammates. Like right here you can see I'm covering W3 while he gets situated, gets those uh, brood commanders and stuff off of him. M4's plowing away with the plasma purifier. And I'm able to restock up before running back in to kind of make sure that W3 doesn't get eaten alive. Some of y'all might be asking the obvious question. But Commissar, why do I need a team? They're all dumb as hell. They're worse than the bugs. Well, Cadet, that is a very selfish mindset, and I can tell you that you are not coordinating with your team. You're laying expectations on your team, and then being disappointed when they don't match. And that's not a good way to play in a cooperative, team-based environment. Instead, I need to know where they are, what they're doing, 
and what they're equipped with. Like, what's their loadout? Do I do they have a recoilless rifle? Do they got a railgun? What are they rocking? When I know these three pieces of information, I can play off of anybody. I don't care if you're a 40 six-year-old dad who only plays 30 minutes a day. You hop into a hell dive with me and I know what loadout you have and you're nearby, I'm gonna get you through it. And even if I don't, when I respawn in, I'm gonna rain hell down on whatever killed us. So when I, when you know this, oh, by the way, don't mind W3 blasting me in the face, is another thing I wanted to mention is that it's okay if you get killed by your teammates, y'all. This is not a game where death actually matters beyond the reinforcements. So I know it can be annoying if you get blown up by a cluster strike or W3 just blasts your face off with an arc blitzer. It doesn't really matter because we're all in it together. We all only win if we all get to the Pelican. So if they mess up and kill me, I'm going to try to laugh it off. If they're doing it maliciously, I'll kick them out of the game. But unless they're like actively trying to kill their squad mates, I'm, I'm not bothered by it, y'all. Like, you know, if you drop a minefield and I step on it, well, that's my bad. I should have known where it was, or I should have been paying attention. If you feel like in a lot of your games, your, your teammates are just more of a hindrance than a help, I really do think it's because you're not looking at it with this type of a mindset. It's not a what can you do for me kind of thing. It's more of a what can I do for you. Because if I know what my loadout does, and I follow around somebody that is equally equipped to deal with threats I cannot, then it's going to be a good match. Like, I run around with a lot of the game here with M4. I don't know this person. Just met him in this game. We never spoke a word. But we're able to coordinate really well. Like, you'll see here, we cleared out that bug breach, and now we're getting swarmed by a bunch of chargers. So I start stunning it. Little bug bites me in the toes. So M4 finishes him off with his auto cannon, and then we just start moving again together. Another charger comes up, same kind of deal. I get behind him, I start shooting him, and if he turned around to come for me, then M4 is going to take him out. I don't need to trust M4 to be good to deal with one enemy on the screen at a time, because I already killed everything else. Killed it all with an orbital gas strike and an incendiary grenade. So now we can work together very easily without really, like, talking or even really using pings that much beyond, like, heavy here you know go to that bug hole the gist of it is that just a little communication can go a long way if you blow up your teammate with a stratagem on accident just ping i'm sorry it just lets them know that you didn't do it on purpose you're not trying to ruin their fun it's all just part of being a hell diver we die all the fucking time and you'll see in this game i already got blasted once by a teammate and it is not the last of this match if y'all been liking what you've seen so far then consider liking the video that one click helps me out a lot and lets me know if y'all are enjoying yourselves. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing and checking out my solo Helldive runs. I really appreciate all you cadets and you give me the motivation I need to explore new options and new ways to play. I do also try and reply to every single comment beneath my videos, so if you have questions or ideas for what you want to see next, let me know. But now that I've done my due diligence in making these videos, let's talk tactics. Y'all might have noticed that I've spent the last 30, 40 seconds or so covering my friend here in the mech, because I know that that mech suit is terrible at dealing with things that are close. But I do manage to throw a fire grenade, not notice I was on fire because of the 500 kilo in the background, and burn to death. But I am going to get dropped back in fairly quickly, and I'll be able to scoop my stuff up and go back to supporting M4 over there. He just hopped out of his mech suit, and I noticed that there's not a lot of bugs left, so I'm not too concerned. I see there's no bug breach active. This should be a pretty easy cleanup. But because I was able to work with M4 while they were in their mech suit, it kind of made this whole primary objective encounter much easier because these primary objectives can be very difficult. These like ore refining ones or anyone that like lets the enemy know exactly where you are and they'll start spawning bug breaches and all that kind of stuff. It does get pretty tough if you're not cooperating with your team as well as you could. Just be aware of where they are and what they're doing. Here's another great example of just subtle teamwork. I threw that 500 kilo. M4 knew it wasn't going to hit unless he baited it and vomited on him. So he just did a hero play there, made my hell bomb work. He enabled my stratagem to be effective. I would have missed if M4 did not do that. The Bile Titan would have moved a little bit and the 500 kilo wouldn't have gone directly under them. So right here, he's dealing with whatever he was shooting at. I'm going to be covering him because I saw he was reloading. And I've got my fire grenades, but as soon as my primary runs out, I back up because I know M4 just reloaded. And I'm going to start picking off this charger as well. As soon as it's dead, I'm going to back up, let M4 cover me so I can reload. 
I see all these hunters coming. I know he's got a plasma purifier and an auto cannon. He's going to be terrible at killing these hunters. So I make it my number one priority to just nuke that little squad out of the way. And then we start getting the parade of the giant fucking roaches. I think that's three bile titans, y'all. So I toss out the rail cannon strike. I'm pretty confident it will not kill one, but I know it'll get it low enough that I can finish it off pretty easily later. So I throw out the 500 kilo, I let it kind of bait in, and we kind of just deal with this little parade of nonsense without too much of an issue. My teammates, G3 over there, I called them C3 earlier, but G3 and M4 are both nearby. But as soon as I notice that M4 is not actively helping me with these Battle Titans, I know he's not looking at them, y'all. So I need to know, what is he doing? You remember what we talked about earlier? And I see that he's over here kind of pushing more of the objective. So I need to make it my responsibility to deal with Battle Titans as best as I can. Because M4 isn't looking, uh, and my other two teammates are just too far away to do anything. Well, W3 got stepped on there, so not much I could have done about that. But I was able to take out two of the three Bile Titans. I'm going to try to finish this one off with the Auto Cannon. But I see my teammate's Orbital Laser come in. So I know I don't really need to deal with that anymore. The Orbital Laser will kill it. I did some damage to it. Orbital Laser will finish it off. So now I just need to make sure that I'm okay and get back to regrouping with my team. And I see the next objective is very close by. But what you're about to see is called an unforced error. I did not need to die here. I see that laser beam in. I just didn't recognize it. It didn't register with me what that was. I didn't think to check if it was an eagle cluster strike. Because if, if I did, I would have made a lot more distance between me and it. Because I was right in its path. So even though my teammate killed me there, that was 100% my fault. I saw the stratagem, and I could have moved out of the way, but I didn't. So I get bowling pinned off the side of the wall after respawning in. I throw out my fire grenades as I'm diving, because remember y'all, you're immune to fire damage, to burning damage while you're diving. You can't be hurt by it. So if I need to throw a fire grenade real close in, I'm going to dive as I throw it, so I can throw it even at my feet and be pretty much fine. So I clear up that little chunk of enemies. I see my teammates up here with the uh, mech suit, the other variety, the Patriot. So I'm just trying to grab up my stuff, and I'm going to watch their backs. I see that Bile Titan come in. I want to check my stratagems, but I know I need to get down to a little bit lower ground. There's nothing that's going up near my teammate. My 500 kilos coming back up. Objective needs to be pushed. So I move down, get on the objective, because my teammates are not in a good position to do it. And I'm just kind of waiting. I'm waiting to see what I need to do. This Bile Titan might get hit by something else, I don't know yet, so I'm kind of waiting to see if my teammates are able to take care of it, because I do have both my 500 kilos and my Orbital Rail Cannon strap. But I don't see any ordnance coming in, so I go ahead and toss out that Orbital Rail Cannon, and it's able to finish it off, I think because it took some damage from the Auto Cannon earlier. As far as I can tell, y'all, Bile Titans, they have, they have a lot of health, but... An orbital rail cannon very nearly kills them. So like a couple auto cannon shots or, you know, a quasar to the body, whatever. They should fall over pretty quick. Now we got another bug breach coming in as part of the primary objective. I know my teammates are for the most part behind me. So I need to make sure this isn't a problem for them. Because if this bug breach gets loose, they're going to be surrounded. Because I'm assuming that they're fighting stuff on the other end and not just standing there with their thumb up their ass. But I'm able to pretty easily handle this bug breach completely by myself because my loadout is well thought out and I planned for this kind of stuff. I know that my fire grenades are going to kill anything that's small, my autocan is going to kill anything that's big, and my pummeler is going to make sure they respect my personal space. We've already finished all the primary objectives. We do go off and clear a few of the side ones, but I'm not really going to show you all that. I want to keep this video a little bit shorter. But this is another good example of me playing off of a teammate. This is G2. They've been kind of, I don't know, dicking around the whole match. I haven't really seen them do much. I think they've been off doing side objectives and stuff. But I know that with that Arc Blitzer, they're going to have that same kind of stagger power as me. So it's pretty safe for us to just deal with whatever's in front of us because our weapons synergize pretty well. Like, they both do a lot of stagger. Arc Blitzer does a lot of AoE damage. So it just kind of makes it a very safe combination, even if it might not be the most immediately lethal version. So we're all running towards the extraction. I keep hearing groups of hunters, so I throw up my uh, fire grenades, kind of clear the way for my team. And we're just kind of going to haul ass to the uh, to the extraction. So let's look at how that goes. And just so y'all understand why I'm coming out of a hell pod, I did die, and you see 
uh, M4 there saying thank you. It's because he shot a grenade pistol near me and then a charger ran me over while I was ragdolled. So that's how I died. I just want to be transparent with y'all. I'm not trying to hide my deaths or nothing. But uh, he was responsive to that because we've been working well together the entire game. I just said it's no problem. Like, don't worry about it. And then, you know, gives me the thank you. We're able to keep cooperating and keep killing these bugs. I just really want to drive this point home to y'all because I, I really think, coming from a game like Dark Tide, cooperation makes these games so much more fun, y'all, and so much easier. Like, you get the most cool cinematic moments you'll ever see in your life from this game if you just play off your team a little bit. It's those incidental times when you get a proper firing line lined up. Like, we got a mech behind us, we got three troopers all fighting in the same direction. It just looks great. So, I just want y'all to be a little bit more patient with your teammates understand how to help them work like earlier when m4 made my uh, 500 kilo hit the bile titan like enable your team to be good and they'll never be bad even in the worst case scenario where somebody's having a real off game maybe they brought the wrong load out and they just they suck for that match it's fine because we can just use them as meat shield y'all like the enemies will gather around them they'll die we throw a gas track and incense grenade on their corpse and we just avenged their death in the most appropriate Helldivers Viking funeral of all time. Like you can see here, we're all throwing our stratagems in the same direction. And by doing this, we're not getting overwhelmed. My team's able to take out these Bio Titans one at a time. I keep throwing my ordnance to help out as well. And I'm just kind of covering these lanes. I'm covering their flanks. I'm popping back up on top to get that high ground vision. I'm doing whatever I can to make this extraction as painless as possible. Because as you can see, the the number of enemies is getting truly ridiculous. We still have another Bile Titan, we got chargers creeping up, we got everything going on. But we are able to hold off the tide of bugs and hop on Pelican 1 for the win. And I guarantee y'all, if you follow my advice throughout this video, you will get to extraction a lot more frequently on higher difficulties than you are used to. Or if you're just tired of having really rough games that don't feel smooth or whatever, you're not having fun with the combat. This mindset of enable your teammates, it helps a lot with that, and it also opens up so many different loadouts that I'm really excited to show y'all. Like, for instance, the stalwart crap in solo play, but when you're up with a team and you're playing like this, it's actually really good, and it's really fun to use, especially when your Helldiver starts shouting about, you know, for Super Earth. It's great. I hope y'all have enjoyed this new style of video, because I had a lot of fun making it. There's nothing quite like teaming up with a bunch of randoms and just wrecking shit on enemy planets. I love it. I hope y'all liked it as well. But, until next time, Commissar Kai, signing out.